The topic of this presentation is theme-centered interaction, which the acronym TCI stands for. The TCI concept was developed by the humanistic psychologist Ruth Cohn. It is very helpful for working with groups and teams, especially for counseling and coaching clients, but also for directing institutions and their employees. The goal of TCI is to facilitate the interaction between tasks and individuals in order to encourage the development of factual, social and self-competence. It is appropriate for all areas in which people need to work together successfully. Therefore, it can be applied in all kinds of teams and groups. TCI is particularly helpful for people who desire to restructure their personal lives. Thus, TCI is one of the most widely used methods in the areas of humanistic psychology and education. What are the benefits of using TCI for a coach? The coach is able to observe and reflect group processes from a meta-level point of view. The concept is designed to take care of and take into account the individuality of the client. Using the concept allows to enhance the performance of coaching processes and to gain more efficiency. Further, the concept gives a structure to the coach to reflect group conflicts and their backgrounds. Every group is defined by four factors. I, the individual, we, the group interaction, it, the task, and the globe, the context in which all takes place. The triangle of I, it, and we is placed in a circle symbolizing the globe that embraces the organizational, physical, structural, social, political, ecological surroundings. In a narrow and wider sense, it stands for conditions of influences on the human teamwork of the group, which in turn are influenced by the work of the group. The globe can create disturbances and it can upset dynamical balance, shifting weight to one corner of the triangle. Thus, one must always be conscious of the globe and the constraints it produces and take these into account. Appreciation and support of the equilibrium among the I, we, it factors in context represents the basis of the TCI group work. The task of the coach or the group leader is to pay attention to the dynamic balance among the four factors. The term dynamic means that balance is not static like a scale, but similar to a bicycle, a part of the process. The theme formulates the common task and the goal of the coaching process. It ought to address the participants holistically and to recognize where they are in their development in order to take the next step. Transferring it into our coaching approach, the theme of the coaching is connected to the individual goal and the general theme of the work group or the peer group. The theme gives a productive focus on the coaching, yet it must be balanced with other needs. The we of the group develops from the centering around the theme and is why TCI is termed theme-centered. Finally, the theme on which the group is working is influenced by all four factors, not only by it. This point is specific to TCI. The coach or group leader considers her or himself to be a part of the system. Thus, he or she is both participant and group leader. As a participant, the coach acts as a model according to the postulates and he or she selectively and authentically adds his or her thoughts and feelings. As a leader, the coach senses, formulates and presents themes that will support the group process. He or she suggests possible structures and makes sure that they are maintained. He or she observes the balance among I, we, theme and globe. 
the postulates arise from the need to recognize reality, not dogma, as an authority. Be aware of your own internal and external situation and make decisions responsibly taking both the other person and yourself into account. In short, be your own chairperson. Disturbances and passionate involvements take precedence. Look at them as a chance and regard them as a sign of something that has been overlooked or repressed. Be responsible for what you do and what you don't do in your personal life as well as in society. The postulates are also based on the values and the view on mankind that are expressed in the following axioms. Each individual is a psychobiological unity. It is also part of the universe and is therefore both autonomous and interdependent. A person's autonomy increases the more he or she becomes aware of his or her interdependence with everyone and everything. All living beings and their growth and decline deserve to be respected. Respect for that which grows is the basis for all evaluating decisions. The humane is valuable, the inhumane is a threat to what is valuable. Making free decisions happens within provisory internal and external boundaries. It is possible to extend these boundaries. The following auxiliary rules are instructions for implementing the postulates that are based on the axioms. First one, represent yourself when you speak, speak in the I form and do not use we or one. Second, when you ask a question, say why you ask and what the question means to you. Speak for yourself and avoid interviewing the client. Third, be authentic and selective in your communications. Fourth, hold back your interpretations of others. You should express your personal reactions instead. And also hold back on generalizations. Fifth, watch your body language and that of the others. Your own body language reveals your feelings and meanings to the others. Other people's body language reveals their feelings and meanings to you. Six, when you say something about another person, also tell what it means to you. Seventh, private exchanges take priority. They may be annoying sometimes, but usually they are very important. They would not happen if they were not important. Even if side discussions are ostensibly disturbing, they are usually important for the deeper levels of communication. They may bring new stimuli, emphasize ambiguities and misunderstandings or expose a disturbed interaction or relation. Last but not least, only one person should speak at a time. We like to close this presentation with a famous quote of Ruth Cohen in this respect. She said, auxiliary rules help when they help and are not meant to be enforced as laws. Mm -hmm.